chasing the police every single day. Hi, Jeff Lustig. Uh, just a quick um, comment about the Punta Gorda sign ordinance. Um, are we planning on appealing that decision? Um, and I'm concerned about um, um, the 14-2 um, noise ordinance um, that we don't make the same mistake with that. Um, if the city attorney can um, comment on that at the end, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any? Yes, Mayor. Um, I provided the city council with a, a, a memorandum that included a copy of the circuit court judge's uh, ruling uh, adverse to the city in the Sheets and Massey cases. Um, I was, uh, gave some brief comments and uh, as, as um, diplomatic as I could, and I'm going to be a little bit even briefer and more diplomatic currently. Uh, we do have a, an opportunity to take an appeal, provided we appeal no later than October 26, 2020. In my professional opinion, uh, I believe that the, the, uh, the decision was uh, not consistent with longstanding um, Supreme Court precedent, and that in and of itself would be a sufficient grounds for appeal. But I have no high level of confidence that uh, we would be successful in appealing it to the District Court of Appeal. And so I'm, uh, I'm looking for direction, but it would be my recommendation that the city not take an appeal of that decision. Which then means we have to revisit the sign code ordinance and uh, revise it. There will be, yes. Um, um, I don't want to get too technical about it, but uh, he did indicate that the application of our sign code as it related to indecent speech to the two uh, individuals that were cited um, uh, was, uh, did not constitute a violation of our ordinance. Um, I think that it would make the ordinance more difficult to implement and enforce if we left it the way it was. My recommendation um, is to remove the language as it relates to uh, obscene, uh, indecent, and fighting words to avoid the constitutional arguments. Um, timing of the, of the uh, amendment, uh, I want to get a final determination from the attorney who's representing the city in the federal case if, uh, if that would have a bearing on his case. I don't think it will, but I, I, I will want to uh, make sure that I don't do anything that somehow frustrates his case. But, but at some point in time, we will be, I will be suggesting an amendment of the, of the existing ordinance and would also suggest that we do not uh, seek to enforce those provisions uh, until such time as the ordinance is amended. And to elaborate on that just for a moment, when David says uh, there was some uh, conflict between interpretation of words, uh, some words can be used as a verb, as an adjective in a non-sexual content where the same word could be used in a sexual content. And if we were able to completely differentiate from that, those two, uh, our ordinance may be somewhat enforceable in that context. But how can you do that when if someone's using something as a verb, uh, it's a freedom of speech issue as opposed to the other. Uh, very difficult, very you know, tenuous to even discuss. So it's not something that uh, even if we would win on appeal because there was uh, sufficient grounds for it that is uh, a position that it would be uh, palatable to take to try to prove a point that we could win. Uh, instead, it would be uh, much more conducive for our staff and for operations and how we enforce policy of this. And there's a couple others we have to look at also uh, to change the ordinance and uh, go back to a different position of how we enforce what happens under that sign code. What do you all think? I would like to see us not appeal. <clears throat> I think that from the very beginning of this ordinance, it has put a target on our city. It has put targets on our backs. We tried to uphold community standards. Um, 
those of you who were on council at the time this ordinance was enacted, it was response to public queries. They asked us to do this. I know Nancy, Lynn, and I particularly had endless emails and you know basically it was because of one person but <clears throat> I would not want any other person sitting in this seat to have to go through what some of us went through um, because of this ordinance and I think that to protect everybody's safety and sanity we should let it go. I would agree with that. Um, I'm I think we've spent enough time and money on this whole sign code dispute for the past two years and uh, I, th I think we just need to move on, change what has to be changed and move on. Um, you know, I didn't like all the threats that were made on my life, on my house, on my family. I didn't like all the things that were going on um, surrounding all of the craziness of, of the suits that were being filed. and. It's a shame that some people have to act with that kind of behavior as adults, but it happens. And I just don't, I don't think we're gonna stop it no matter what we do, but I think we've spent enough time and money on this sign code ordinance and defending it. And I think, I think let's just move on. That's my feeling. I agree, <clears throat> I agree. Mark, any comments? I wasn't on council when this was approved. I am of the opinion, never back down from anything. So I don't care what it is, whether it's a sign ordinance or not, um, I don't back down. So if it's three to one, that's fine. I'm not voting in favor of, I wouldn't vote in favor of the sign ordinance per se, but I'm not in favor of backing down. Okay. Well? Um, I have my answer. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, thank you. City Clerk, do you have anything else? Okay. Um, I have a few things. Um, Court, sign ordinance unconstitutional. Ruling came out against Punta Gorda on Monday before Hurricane Ian. By Frank DeFury. Staff writer. Punta Gorda a city ordinance regarding obscene language in signs was ruled unconstitutional in a state court late last month. On Monday, September 26 just one day before Hurricane Ian was due to make landfall circuit Judge Geo underscore Ray Gentile issued a ruling in a civil suit made by Andrew Sheets against the city of Punta Gorda. This case is about pure political speech in the most public of forums, Gentile wrote in his opinion. Gentile also ruled against the city in a separate, similar case brought by Richard Massey. As a result of the ruling, Approximately $3,000 in total local fines were overturned. Sheets had brought the suit after being cited four times under the code ordinance. The citations occurred after Sheets displayed a sign that read F. Biden in a public space, along with other signage reading F. Trump and F. the police. Massey was also cited for a sign that read F. Punta Gorda, trying to illegally kill free speech. The code ordinance defines O underscore of language to include fighting words, indecent speech or obscene words, as well as anything that would depict or describe sexual or excretory activities or organs in a manner that is O underscore of as measured by contemporary community standards. Such speech, under the ordinance, could not be displayed on signs, flags or clothing in a public place where it can be viewed by children under the age of 17. Gentile's ruling referenced the U.S. Supreme Court's 1971 Cohen v. California case for its reasoning, in that case, a man wearing a F the draft jacket could not be sanctioned by the government under First Amendment protections. Punta Gorda claims that the limitation to places where children under May 17 see the signs is a narrow limitation. It is not, Gentile wrote in the ruling. Gentile also took time to determine if certain uses of the word would violate the law at all, citing a dictionary. In terms of dictionary definitions, F is, sometimes used interjectionally with an object, to express anger, contempt, or disgust, Gentile wrote, quoting Merriam-Webster. Under this interpretation of the word, Gentile wrote, it would be understood that Sheets was not referring to a sexual or excretory act. For recent law, 
Gentile cited the Supreme Court ruling in Monoy School District VBL from 2021. In that case, a disgruntled student posted a picture of herself and a friend holding up their middle fingers with the phrase F school F softball F cheer F everything typed out on the picture. After her school sanctioned her, she challenged it and ultimately received a ruling in her favor. The court concludes that the ordinance is unconstitutional if applied to the very children Punta Gorda is seeking to protect, Gentile wrote in his ruling. How can it be applied to Sheets? Gentile finished his ruling by saying that the city's heart is in the right place, but ultimately had no constitutional standing. Attorneys for both sides made their oral arguments in early August. The city of Punta Gorda was represented by city attorney David Levin, while both Plenty underscore S were represented by Fares Heindel, a lawyer A underscore liated with the Rutherford Institute. The Rutherford Institute, a non-profit organization that aims to check governmental power, issued a press release on September 27 about the ruling. John W. Whitehead, president of the Rutherford Institute, praised the ruling for preserving the right of political free speech. As the Supreme Court recognized, laws of this sort empower the government to suppress unpopular ideas or information and manipulate the public debate through coercion, which is exactly the kind of tyranny the First Amendment was intended to prohibit, Whitehead said in a news release. There is currently a separate federal civil case challenging the law. It is unclear if that case will continue in light of the state circuit court ruling or if an appeal is planned for the state ruling. The Daily Sun has attempted to contact Punta Gorda for comment. Copyright Sun Coast Media Group, Inc., edition October 8, 2022. Powered by Tpnavia.